Hello, and welcome to This Week in James City County. I'm your host, Renee Dahlman. On today's episode, we are once again sitting down with Scott Stevens, James City County County Administrator. Welcome, Scott. Well, Renee, always great to be here with you and talk about things going on in James City County. Well, speaking of, let's just get started. What's going on? Uh, well, you know, the first for me is just noticing the weather change. And I know March is approaching. I'm optimistic. I'm a spring and summer kind of person. So mm-hmm. for those, uh, uh, not that I want to wish in the snow, but I'm certainly excited if we make it through March and on into spring, but I enjoy being outdoors. And so I hope others are taking advantage of this time of year and the weather we're having as well. Yep. Um, you know, I thought I would just talk a little bit about the Board of Supervisors and their meetings over really January and February because they've met a number of times and just hit highlights. I don't mean to be all inclusive, but if folks have questions or comments, I would certainly encourage them to find us, right? That, that That's our goal is to make sure we're communicating well with their citizens here and that if they need more information to ask them to find us. So right. we'll uh, uh, give numbers and those kinds of things where they can do that later. Uh, we have started a retiree recognition in, with the Board of Supervisors. Mm-hmm. When I questioned the board and would they be willing, they were very receptive to that. We've had a number of employees who worked 30 years of careers here that we spend a few minutes recognizing them in front of the board and allowing the board to thank them for their service as well as allowing the employee to ha- share any comments. And those have been very rewarding for me. I hope they have. They're really meant to be rewarding for the employee. But I think it's great to highlight our employees. We have a great group of people working here. And when somebody has spent a career working for this community, uh, I do think it serves us well to recognize them in a public forum. And I don't want to thank the board for allowing us to do that. Um, we also are at the beginning of our budget process in right. terms of the community and, and hearing more from us. Uh, the schedule we have for budget is coming, but it will be – a release date of March 29th, so we'll put that out in, where everybody can take a look, and, as well as our board. We have a public hearing scheduled for April 9th, so March 29th we release it. April 9th uh, we have a public hearing. The Board of Supervisors will have two work sessions in April with the hope of adopting the budget March 14th. So that's our schedule. March 14th Excuse or May? Me. May 14th. There that's why go. we're a team here, Renee, <laughs> that's so thank right. you very much. And then we are, are having a neighborhood forum uh, coming before the release of the budget, really to talk about the budget process. We've periodically done these neighborhood forums. This one happens to be March 14th, and that's where I'm making up that date as right. well. And it's at 6.30, and it's going to be at our Board of Supervisors boardroom here at Mounts Bay in Building F. So those that would like to attend the neighborhood forum will answer questions on whatever, but our primary topic is going to be budget and preparation and process. So if folks have questions for us on that. We're happy to engage and be part of that as well. Well, I'd like to take a second and go a little bit behind the scenes. I know that over the last couple of weeks, there have been department heads coming in and meeting with you and meeting with our budget folks. Can you tell me about that? What's going on? Well, you know, the process really begins months ago where departments are asked to put their budget requests together. We are in the second year of a two-year budget. So what we really are focusing on are the differences. What was the plan for uh, fiscal year uh, 20 and our budget year, as most know, runs July 1st through June 30th. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about fiscal year 20, we're talking about the budget that ends in June of 2020. So department heads put their differences to the plan. They, the plan was approved last year, two year budget. This year, any differences? And we have been having a meeting to understand what those differences are. Why, why is what you put together a year and a half ago not where you think we ought to be for the next year? Right. Some of that are fuel prices, right? Things that make sense. If gas has gone up and more than we anticipated, some increases in fuel. And some were changes of, hey, we had a air conditioning system that we thought would make it another year, but it appears it's going to need to be replaced or things of that nature. So for me and our finance staff, it's really trying to understand the differences and why so that we can explain that clearly to our board of supervisors as we get into meetings with them. Okay. All right. Very good. What else? Um, what else? Well, plenty else. Uh, workforce <laughs> housing has been talked about for the past year and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ta- housing task force did report back to the board. It wasn't their final reporting, but to give them at least some insight of where they are, and they will be uh, providing that final report. A lot of good information, a lot of time and effort. I do want to thank those members. It's still not an easy problem to solve, and it's one of those things that's going to be an ongoing communication uh, with our residents and developers and others on how do we address that. Curbside recycling, uh, still a lot of conversation there. We're almost to the end of knowing uh, how we want to proceed with that. Uh, There are a lot of moving parts to that. We did talk with the board uh, during January about passing on most of the recycling costs to our residents, Mm -hmm. and the board seemed supportive of at least in concept of that. And the driver behind it is we currently spend about $500,000 a year for recycling. 
and we do that pro- property t- through property taxes and provide service to about 25,000 households. Mm-hmm. That cost is somewhere a little less than $1.70 per month, and then we're at the end of a five-year contract. In rebidding the contract, the cost has gone from about $1.70 a month to closer to $6 a month. Wow. And the time you add billing onto it, if we're going to bill, which we are talking about, it really turns into about $7 a month. So okay. you go from a half a million dollar expenditure to something closer to $2 million. And so that's really the idea behind pushing that cost as a service onto residents and let them have a choice. If they'd like to recycle, here's the cost, uh, and we would let them continue. If they don't see the value in that, um, then they have a choice and they don't have to continue. And so uh, I believe we have a, a citizenry that very is interested in recycling. We have a very high set out rate, almost more, well, 80% plus in terms of people that regularly put their recycling carts out. Mm-hmm. So I hope we don't lose customers that way, but at least it's given them a choice. It's not putting the burden on the taxpayers, so to speak. It is a service. If you want it, you can pay to have it. And if you don't want it, you don't have to have it. So that is coming. We are, through the midst of all that, we, along with Williamsburg, York County, and Bacosan, contract with VIPSA, and that's a regional entity Mm -hmm. that we all work together to get a better rate on our recycling. So VIPSA is bidding the contract, and they have. That's the increased cost that we're seeing, and then we, James City County, have an agreement with VIPSA, as do the other localities. And so it's a little convoluted on how all that works. Mm -hmm. We don't contract directly with the recycler. Uh, But we will be changing from county waste to TFC. Okay. And so that will be a change effective July 1st. VIPSA will be changing our contracts with VIPSA. So that will change July 1st. Residents shouldn't see anything different other than likely swapping out carts. Okay. I know TFC and county waste were talking about would they purchase the carts? Would TFC buy new carts? That really is a private party transaction between those companies. So they're working that out. Okay. Uh, Residents should see TFC start collecting their recycling in July, August, and September. And then we would start billing if the board approves in late August, September for service in October, November, December. So residents don't need to be worried about a bill from us in the coming months, but late summer, early fall, I would think they will see something else. And we're going to communicate more uh, Mm -hmm. as we go forward. We do need to meet with the board of supervisors and get a final approval. Uh, We hope to do that at the board's work session in March. We will hopefully have what our final direction will be, and we'll come back and start sharing that with the community, what the facts really are in terms of how we're going to operate going forward. But just want to keep that out there because it is significant, Mm -hmm. and we have had a lot of questions, and we do want to make sure people understand what we're doing and sort of the driver behind that. Okay. Um, You know, I will say the board, during a a short retreat we held in uh, January, uh, did talk about land preservation and having an interest in that again. And so that is a topic that staff is working on developing, sort of a prioritize. Uh, what, what would be priorities for a corridor? Would it be corridors that are more subject to development? Is it more subject to view sheds? And those are things we're working on to bring a recommendation back to the Board of Supervisors on what they would like to do in preserving our view shed, so to speak. We want to retain that rural character. Can you explain what view shed is? Well, I don't know if I have the uh, technical Webster definition, but uh, for me, that means when you're you're driving down the road and you enjoy the rural nature and and the fields and the horses and those kinds of things, Mm -hmm. how do we protect that, right? What stops you as a property owner from deciding you want to sell it and turn it into a convenience store? Okay. And so as a private property somebody, I think you have that right And we shouldn't stop that unless we're willing to compensate you. And so we need to be, well, the direction I've taken from the board is let's look at what makes sense and have a plan on going out and trying to purchase those rights, whether it's an easement, whether it's actually purchasing the property, whether it's saying, hey, let's hold an area that's 300 foot from the road or 800 foot from the road. Mm -hmm. So as you you as a property owner could develop your property, but still we have a rural, pleasant uh, drive through that viewscape so or view shed as you're driving up and down some of these roads that most of us really enjoy and mm-hmm. we move here because we enjoy right. those looks and it is trying to balance that development and allow that to occur because i think that is a good thing for our community mm-hmm. with how do we preserve the rural nature and so those are at least some topics that the board is doing and trying to make sure we don't mistreat our property owners by just regulating it but in compensation of some form or fashion and having a prioritization of, of what makes sense. Okay. Makes so sense. More to come on that. Okay. So, uh, a couple other things, ongoing conversations uh, about the tourism tax and the 1% and the tourism setting up their side and end mm-hmm. up with money and James city County, York and Williamsburg additionally have funding. We in James city could tell you where our money's going. I didn't bring that list, but the, about four and a half million dollars comes from that 1% tax and hotel motel back to 
um, James City County. Mm-hmm. And we are spending that on tourism-related one-time expenses, and that was the board's direction last year, and I think that will be continue in our FY20 budget as well. The other side, we've had a lot of conversation, and Supervisor Larson has been our lead person mm-hmm. in that, is working through the chamber and setting up bylaws. And the chamber's going from what I believe was one organization to really three. They're going to have the alliance, which is the umbrella organization of the chamber, and then they're going to have a tourism side that will take in this money that's generated and do tourism-related things, and then they will have a business council. And so it's three new sets of bylaws, mm-hmm. and they've worked through that over the last several months. Uh, I think the, the process well, um, has been a very compromising process, and I don't think we as local governments are all the way where we want to be, but mm-hmm. it's come a long way. And I will have to come in uh, Ms. Larson, as well as uh, the chamber, uh, and trying to at least get to common ground where mm-hmm. we can. And, and that's in board representation. It's making sure our board has been very concerned with public oversight of the, the dollars. I mean, mm-hmm. they're not necessarily money that we control, but that 1% sales tax is still taxpayer money. Right. And our board feels very strongly that it ought to have good oversight and transparency. And the chamber staff and their, their uh, board has really come a long way, and I think they – feel the same way. It's just trying to make sure we're getting that in words so that uh, the bylaws reflect that. And I think um, from where I sit, it's come a long way. The work's not done yet, but I don't want people to think that uh, we're not making progress on that. I believe we are. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I do think the community will be better for it once it's done and implemented and people have some time to see that it is being effective in terms of bringing more uh, revenue in terms of tourists and others in our community. I would also maybe help the chamber a little bit and not try to set a false expectation. You know, they've right. been receiving that money this year, meaning since July 1st. They are collecting money. The revenues are good. They're still working on their plan for development and marketing, and I'm not on that side. Okay. But they're still trying to hire a, a term, tourism director. They have an interim director. Mm-hmm. So all those things, I don't want people to think this summer they're going to have all this money. It's going to be all better this summer. Right. Uh, it could be better, uh, but it might be because the weather's good and people come. Uh, but I, I do think over time they're trying to s- show how they benchmark where we are today and that we are having a positive impact. And I'm really pleased to see that they're working through those kinds of things. So more to come on that. Now, when you talk about a one-time tourism expense, what would be an example of that? You know, for us, a one-time tourism expense may be the replacement of the synthetic fields at Warhill. Okay. Right, That's a one-time expense for us. It's It was a capital improvement item for us. Uh, I'm told the fields are phenomenally, I say better, where they had been played on a number of years. I had someone that that had a tournament a few weeks ago, first tournament on the new fields, and they said they were incredible. So that's something that as you bring in tournaments, you're going to bring in people from outside this community to spend money here, hopefully spend some nights, but certainly eat and shop and do all those things that we do when we visit another place. And for us, that's a one-time expenditure, at least today. Now, we another 10 or 15 years, we may be spending that again, but it's not an annual recurring expense like a salary. Okay. You know, a couple other things the board has done over the last several months. Uh, we did accept a number of grants awards. I didn't detail those out, but they're in our minutes and agenda. And again, mm-hmm. that's always uh, a complimentary to our departments for seeking out those funds. Some of them are easier than others, but they all take work on our part to get. And I certainly uh, applaud our staff for doing those kinds of things because that saves us here locally, right? right. It still tax money usually, but it's out money outside of James City County and mm-hmm. offsets some of our costs. Number of contract awards that I think citizens will see in the community. Uh, the replacement of the HVAC and boiler at the library, the JCC library. Mm-hmm. So that's something that they may not see, but they certainly will benefit from right. and appreciate. Uh, so that contract did get awarded. We have a renovation going on to the second story of the recreation center, and it was a space that had been used by an outside agency that mm-hmm. moved out. And so that contract was awarded and our hope is once that's completed they will move this fitness center upstairs will spread out and have a little more space for our patrons there Mm -hmm. and then we did an award of a new financial accounting software pretty large expenditure on the outside you won't see much but from our staff side it brings us up to date in terms of keeping up with where our finances are and the software and technology and that's always an an ongoing process for us the board did conduct a public hearing on the Oakland Point project. Mm-hmm. Um, they did vote four to one to approve that. Um, I will just say it was one of those areas where the board listened and read all citizen emails, listened to citizen comment. I know they struggled personally in talking with them mm-hmm. with the right decision, uh, that decision they now have made, and, and we'll see where that ends up. But I do want to thank the citizens that were involved. That matters. Mm-hmm. And I do want to thank the board for their time and deliberation on that because I know that was something that they really felt very passionate about of trying to make sure they made a good decision for the community. And it was a hard decision for them. And then finally, uh, we are to the point that we are talking with Thomas Nelson Community College. Bill Porter started that last summer about where we might put fire station number six off of Opportunity Way behind Mm -hmm. the 
behind, beside the law enforcement center there. And Thomas Nelson happens to own 20 acres behind our law enforcement center. We gave that property to Thomas Nelson some years ago so they would come and open their satellite um, uh, college here. And so with that being said, we've talked to them about that 20 acres. Do they have a need for it? And the answer seems to be no. So we're hopeful, and the board did ask for a resolution that we would accept it if they would give it back. They've indicated a willingness to give it back. And so we hope that will happen in March as well, March or April time frame. Okay. And that will provide us a, a, what we believe a good site for our fire station as well as some future opportunities between partnership with the college and with our staff in terms of training centers and other things that may be able to occur on that site as well. Okay. So we're excited about that. Um, I did attend uh, my first VACO day with the board uh, back in January, went up to the legislature while they were in session, uh, along with a lot of other counties from across Virginia, mm-hmm. and trying to advocate for things that were important to our communities or important to all counties across the Commonwealth. So that was an interesting day for me, mm-hmm. uh, and I do want to thank our board, and um, you never know if those are effective But I think the relationship piece and going up and telling why it's important, and I will tell it to our state delegation, they all gave us plenty of time. And I do want to thank them as well because we were in the midst of a busy time for them and also to our board for taking a day to go and do that. And what does VACO stand for? Well, I should know that. It's the Association of (laughs) Counties. And maybe it's the Virginia Virginia, Association of Counties. That would make sense. But I'm making that up a little bit. No, I think you're right. But it is a good association. It does advocate on our behalf. And and beyond just getting information through VACO, it's one of those opportunities where you can network with other county administrators or other board of supervisors member and, and sort of see how they've solved some issues. Because somewhere across Virginia, we all are experiencing similar kinds of challenges. Mm -hmm. Some have figured it out. It worked in their community. We can learn from what they've gone through. And so those provide those kind of opportunities as well. And so I think it's important to be involved. Now, in North Carolina, did North Carolina legislature meet year round? Or is it similar to what we have here in Virginia? Well, it's my first experience in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, if when they say they're going to meet, and these are the dates, that seems to be what I've been told is what they do. Right. Um, North Carolina's uh, had a short session and a long session. They both seem to be long. Um, and I don't <laughs> say that negatively. It just right. seems that if they were going to be done in March, they really weren't done until June. Okay. And their long session that might be done in June sometimes went until August. And it was okay. just topics before the legislature. So they're not full-time in North Carolina. They, they are part-time, mm-hmm. but they – at least in my first experience here in Virginia, they spent a lot more time in North Carolina. I don't know if the result is any different. Mm-hmm. I think you still have toward the end of the session, things moving fast. So you get them done. And I think that's right. what goes, you know, I was told that's what happens in Virginia. That's what I experienced watching this year, but North Carolina is the same way. It didn't seem to matter how long the session was when you get to the last two weeks, they're trying to wrap up things. Right. And so it moves pretty fast in the closing weeks. So okay. I, I'm sure there are pros and cons to both ways, but I, uh, I applaud those legislators who are willing to do that. It is mm-hmm. much more difficult than most of us appreciate. Right. So. Agreed. A couple of other things I would okay. mention outside of board meetings. Again, I have been throughout the community. It's still a great place. I'm still really excited to be here. I was really pleased with the Chambers League class that got into promoting this kindness mm-hmm. campaign. Uh, it's so easy to say. Uh, it's really easy to do, I think, but you have to be focused on it. Right. And simple things of letting a car pass you that maybe you wouldn't have let before, let them in. Those are all of us. We're all in a hurry. We're all trying to get someplace, Uh, you know, picking up trash so the rest of us can enjoy an area, helping somebody at the supermarket that needs help loading a vehicle, whatever those things might be. I really think you just have to be looking for a way to be kind to somebody else. It doesn't take a lot of time and it doesn't take a lot of money, but it takes being focused on that. And I do want to applaud the lead class because I think their topic and project is really an interesting area, and I hope it will build momentum and go from there. Uh, you know, my first few months here, I met with employees, spent a lot of time there, really mm-hmm. pleased with that. My last three months I, or last two months, I've spent a lot of time with civic clubs. Okay. Uh, I th- that has been a really good experience for me going out and talking with community groups or the Qantas or the Rotarians. And I want to just say thanks for the invitations. I have been out. The feedback thus far has been pretty good. A mm-hmm. uh, lot of questions. And I really uh, enjoy talking to groups that have questions. And certainly if there are folks out there that would like me to come speak to their group, I am delighted to do that. So please just reach out and I'll give you a number in a minute to find me and we'll be happy or I'll be happy to come out and share what the county's doing and see what kind of concerns or questions you may have. Now, I also intended my first employee service award. Mm-hmm. And that's that, you know, once a year we recognize our employees for five, 10, 15, 20, 25, five year increments of service. 
And then we recognize our retirees at that service as well. And I do want to say thanks to all the employees who are sticking it out with us. We have a lot that have been here five years. We mm -hmm. have a lot that have been here 20 and beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, I do believe it's a good place, and I'm glad to see our employees that have made it through those milestones think that. And I want to commend them and thank our staff for putting that together and our board for being supportive of that event as well because our board members are there to thank the employees as mm -hmm. well. And, again, it's a really nice event, and I have enjoyed participating in that. We had one other community meeting that I wanted to mention, uh, Ms. Larson, it had concerns expressed over Route 5, mm -hmm. the Green Springs Road, and Centerville intersection, and just concerns with residents over accidents and visibility and how do we make it safer for left turns and those kinds of things. We did have VDOT attend with us. Rossi Carroll and some of his staff were there, so I appreciate them going with us as well. Uh, a very uh, good meeting in terms of listening. The solution is never quite as easy or as quick, uh, but it is something that VDOT is committed to looking at and making improvements. We're trying to help a little bit with lighting. I think one obvious thing that will probably come out of the VDOT study, and they committed to having that study in, th in three to four months, so in a few months from now we ought to have the results of that, will likely be the closing of Centerville Road in terms of left turns okay. off of Route 5 onto Centerville because we're having a number of rear-end accidents where for just a little out of your way, you you don't have to make that left turn. Right. It could still go where you want to go. So it's not, we can't completely close Centerville Row for the fire and EMS response mm -hmm. as they're coming the other direction. But I think that will be a likely recommendation, at least in the short term for VDOT, that should improve safety along that corridor. Long-term left turn lanes would make it better, but that's long-term. Number mm -hmm. one, it's more money. Number two, you've got to do property acquisition. Uh, the park service is on one side. We're talking with them again, but getting... While it might be obvious you could take park service land, they are really protected properties because mm -hmm. they are such an easy thing in developed areas to take. Right. And so there's a lot of uh, re reluctance or resistant rules against taking a park property. But I did want the community to know we are concerned where wherever you are in terms of traffic and issues, please don't hesitate to talk to us, and uh, we will involve VDOT. I have found VDOT to be very good in terms of responding and participating and give us logic. Some things take a little longer than we'd right. like, but right. that just seems to be the process sometimes. Right. So with that, I think that's all the topics I brought. Okay. I'm happy to answer any questions or anything else you might have thought up during that. Well, you know I have questions. Well, great. Okay, and we have a new list of questions. I don't think we had this the last time you were here. So we're going to go into that. But before we do, I would like – making noises here. I would like to tell everyone that every episode, I'm like, give us feedback. Let us know. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What should we do differently? We heard from somebody. They filled out our feedback form. Chris and I were so excited we did not know what to do. So this is from Megan. And I'm assuming that, what do they say on the radio? Long-time listener, first-time caller. Right. We're, we're going to say that. And Megan listened to the behind-the-scenes tour of the website podcast. And she said that the part about the archives was interesting to her and made her think about our fascinating history, which we have quite a bit of here yes it's in roughly 1607 and she thought that it would be helpful if we had an expert come on and talk a little bit more about the history of the county and beyond what we know about that we hear about jamestown and whatnot but some of the nuts and bolts of how things in the county happened and so i want to thank megan for her comment and we are most definitely going to reach out to someone to come and talk with us about history. Yeah, very so, good. Yay! And I think feedback is always great. Love so we feedback. appreciate that from all of our citizens. And I will tell you, I've heard from other states that folks are listening from time to time. So it's you never know the reach. Well, that is awesome. Love to hear it. So you chose two numbers before we began. Well, I chose two, and then I chose a couple more. And finally, we got to... <laughs> yeah, I was a little picky with the numbers that you chose. But first question, what fictional family would you be a member of? Oh, you know, the one that I always thought was pretty cool was the Jetsons, and it was really the flying cars. And nice. That's going back a while, but I like the idea of a flying car. Very so good. We've got a ways to get there, but uh, it's closer than it used to be. Oh, I am amazed with how fast you can come up with answers yeah. to these questions. It doesn't help me to think about questions like that too long. Well, I am impressed. Okay. And then the second one, we've had this question asked before, but I think it's a good one. What is the scariest thing that you have ever done for fun? The scariest thing I've ever done for fun. Gosh, you know, I'm not all that. I, I, want, I like to do things and be active. I don't want to be too scary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, probably hang gliding is the scariest thing. It was a fun wow. thing. 
Well, it's not quite as wild. You're a couple feet above the sand, so it's not like they <laughs> shove you off a cliff your first time out. But okay. you have this big kite hooked to the back of you, and it's windy, and you're just not really sure where you might end up. And um, that was that was pretty um, interesting and as scary a thing as I've done in a while. So Now, would you do it again? Um, I would, particularly over sand and two or three feet off the ground. Yeah, I didn't feel so bad that way. But now, yes. did you have to do it with another person? Were you tandem or were you, know, you on your own? No, this was the first time with, with hang gliding, at least where I was. It was uh-huh. down in the Kitty Hawk area. Uh-huh. It was keeping you pretty low to the ground okay. and the instructor really running along with you. So if you got in trouble, they were there to correct it. Um, so yeah, I think, I don't know what they do to the next level of getting you off the ground. That, mm-hmm. I didn't make it that far in terms of height, uh, but it was a neat experience and one of those things that's pretty intimidating with the, like I said, the big kite. Right. Tied to your back. Absolutely. Well, very good. Great answers. Good. Now, we had talked about, and you had mentioned several times, getting contact information for you out to our listeners. Well, I didn't give them a number yet, but the phone number for me, of course, is 757, but I hate to assume we all know that. Right, right. 253-6603. Again, 253-6603 or scott.stevens, that's S-T-E-V-E-N-S, at James City County VA. Dot gov. Okay. And so either one of those will get to me or they can uh, find me through the website, but I'm happy to interact and um, communicate with our community. Okay, great. And again, the website is jamescitycountyva.gov. And while you're there, you might as well go over to the podcast page, which is slash podcast. And you can complete a survey and let us know what you think about the podcast, as well as find all of our episodes. I have to plug it every time. I think time. that's great. I think that's great. All right. Well, thanks so much, Scott. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. Okay. Well, that wraps up this episode of This Week in James City County. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please take a moment to go online and subscribe. That way you will never miss an episode. You can find us on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you find your podcast. So that wraps it up for this time, and we will see you next week.